It's time for Ask the Tech Guy. Today, we talk about backing up Windows 10 automatically. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remote, visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte, your tech guy here with a question from John. He says, hey, Leo. <laughs> It's a short question, but it uh, carries a lot of weight. How do I set up Windows 10 to automatically back up to an external hard drive? Thanks, John. Well, there are lots of ways to do this. I'm so glad you asked because backup is, of course, really important. If you don't make a copy of your most vital documents, you'll, you'll lose them. You're almost guaranteed you'll lose them. Now, I'm going to say before we tell you how to do it, what you should back up. In general, you don't need to back up Windows. You don't need to back up your apps. Anything that you can download or reinstall yourself, don't bother backing it up. There's already a copy somewhere else out there. You want to back up the stuff only you have. Pictures of your babies or of your wedding, uh, documents, emails, things like uh, financial records. You know, the most important stuff you have is stuff you created and you have the only copy of. That's the stuff you need to back up. And of course, I always refer to my friend Peter Krogh. He's a great photographer, wrote the Digital Asset Management book. Photographers are absolutely crazy about backup. And he's the guy who coined the term 321 backup. Three copies of everything. If you delete the original, then you only have two copies. So you want to have three copies of everything, two different forms of backup, so you're not relying on any kind of media or, or software. And finally, one of those backups should be in the cloud. I'll talk about all three of these things in just a second. Microsoft builds in a couple of backup solutions into Windows 10. One of them is the strangely named File History. File, file History is, believe it or not, a backup solution. This is Microsoft's own support article. You go, you click the start menu, go to settings, update and security, and you'll see in there, there is a backup entry, uh, and then click that and add a drive. You can choose an external drive. You, Microsoft points out you could also use a network location for your backups. Uh, having an ex This was your question, John, so I'll specifically talk about external drive. Having an external drive always connected to your computer uh, you can use file history to automatically back up files. And it does this with versioning. So it will keep as many versions of the file as if you have room on your hard drive. You, you might want to check the settings and make sure that you don't uh, just keep backing up uh, until your hard drive is full. You might want to say only keep 10 copies or only keep copies for six months. There are a variety of choices uh, there. But this is very handy for keeping not only a copy of your documents, but as you change a document, let's say you've changed your will, keeping all the copies uh, for a period of time that have been made. So that's called file history. And that's why the name kind of makes sense. It doesn't mention backup, but that's what it is. It's backing up your files and keeping a history of them. Uh, I think that's a good solution. Um, and it does have an automatic feature to it. But there's an even more automatic way to do this. And that's with Microsoft's old school. They call it legacy backup. You'll find it in the system and security control panel under backup and restore Windows 7. Don't be put off by the name Windows 7. This is still working on Windows 10. It's just their old school uh, way to do it. So let me show you some of the some of the screenshots here of what it looks like because uh, you, you shouldn't be scared. You shouldn't be scared away from it. So backup and restore under Windows 7 allows you to do it automatically to an external drive, either on a schedule or when the drive is connected. You might want to schedule it, say, every day to do an incremental backup. That is, backup the things that are changed. This is a. This is probably the backup most people are familiar with uh, and used. To to and it's a it's a perfectly fine system you can use it uh, reliably and like file history it's free and it comes with windows 10 notice 
uh, on the page, there's an additional entry, create a system image. Let me talk a little bit about what images are. Uh, we used to call them ghosts from the program Norton Ghosts. That was a really old program. For taking everything on a hard drive and bundling it into a single file, kind of like a freeze-dried version of the drive, uh, a, a moment in time. Those are really handy for any time that you want to get a system back up and running quickly. For instance, you buy a new hard drive. You can take an image file and blast it onto the new hard drive. It'll be identical to the old drive you made the image from. So it's very useful for that. I almost always make images when I'm first installing Windows. I'll, I'll do two images. First, I'll install Windows, get it running on a machine, just plain vanilla Windows. I'll make an image file then. And you can make the image to an external drive, to a thumb drive. You can even put it on a CD or a DVD if you want. It's nice to have those lying around because that means you don't have to go through the Windows install process on that machine ever again. You just blast the image back, gets it right back to the brand new fresh install of Windows. I usually make a second image after I install all the apps I know I'm going to want, get everything configured like the Wi-Fi, all the passwords, get my last pass going, all of that. And then I'll make a second image. And that image is usually the one I'll use, which gets me back to that point in time when I had a fresh system properly configured and running. The problem with image backups is they don't record anything after you make that image. They're a point in time, and if you change one file, then that change is not saved. The image backup, you know, brings you back to that point in time. Sometimes people use images, they restore, and then they're disappointed they've lost so much. It's because you weren't backing it up. So images, is uh, imaging backup, you can do it with the System 7, Windows 7 Legacy Backup. It's a great thing to do, but don't think of it as your whole backup strategy. You still want to use file history or the Windows 7 Legacy Backup to back up changed files. They call that incremental backup, backing up all the files that have changed since your last image. There are lots of other third-party tools as well. Those are the two that come with Windows. They're free. The one thing I'm not crazy about, and a lot of backup programs do this, they make a blob. You, you can inspect what's in the blob and so forth, but there's no way to see if that file is intact and is, is properly backed up. You can't just open it. You, you know, it's sitting there in that blob. So I always like to do backups that make an exact directory of the file structure so I can go and look and see that all the files are there and even spot check them by opening them up. That's just a personal preference. Um, lots of people have used Windows Backup uh, since the Windows 7 days and are perfectly happy with it. If you want to look at other offerings, there are excellent free and paid offerings from EaseUS. That's at EaseUS.com. They have data recovery backup. They have a partition manager. They also have an imaging program. Acronis is very well known for its imaging pro program, True Image, but they also have other backup software. You can use True Image 2020 to both backup and create disk images. There's also a company called Macrium, M-A-C-R-I-U-M, and their Macrium Reflect has a free edition you can use to, to do backups. So all of those uh, are perfectly good. You take your pick. Honestly, the ones that come with Windows are generally what I use. But remember, it isn't enough to make a local backup of your most important stuff. You want to make sure, as I mentioned, that you make an off-site copy. So you might go to a company like iDrive, one of our sponsors. Uh, there are many ways to do this to backup to the cloud. Another solution, and this is the one I use, just so you know, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a lot more flexible. I use a network-attached storage or NAS device. I use one from Synology. I have that NAS in a closet at home, and I can put software on all of our systems, our phones, everything we have to automatically back up periodically to that drive in the closet over the network. That means I always have all the data on that drive in the closet. Synology NASes come with software. They actually, you can use iDrive or other software to back up to the cloud so you can have that NAS backed up. If you don't want to spend the money on a subscription to a cloud service, you can even get a second NAS, it's probably more expensive, and, and keep a uh, the identical NAS at work and have those two synchronized. That's actually what I do. I have a Synology NAS here, one at home, and they keep in sync. So I have a copy off-site, a copy at home, and those are always available to me. There's lots of ways, in other words, uh, to do this. A NAS is more expensive, but also much more flexible, and you control the backup. No one else has an access to it. I hope that uh, answers your question, maybe over answers it. Thanks for asking, John. I, I really appreciate it. Ask the Tech Guy brought to you by LastPass from access to authentication to passwords. LastPass manages every entry point to your business so you can mitigate risk 
while improving employee productivity. And LastPass goes above and beyond to ensure security for all its users. Your data is encrypted and decrypted only at the device level. Increased security doesn't have to be complex for your business. Visit LastPass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. LastPass.com slash twit. That's it for this edition of Ask the Tech Guy. If you have a question, email it, askthetechguy at twit.tv. I'm your tech guy, Leo Laporte. I'll see you next week. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv.